Hey, how's it going? So, welcome back. This is part four, I think, of this series uh, making a rocket, a procedural rocket in Houdini. Uh, in the last video, we put the fins on the side, and the vi videos before that, we made the fins and made this fuselage shape. And this one, we're going to put some windows on here. And it's going to be kind of similar to the placement of the fins. We're actually going to use some of the same stuff here that we we used in that part. Uh, but first, we need to create some stuff to place. So I'm going to start with a circle. And so I'm to move my microphone around here a little bit. It gets really loud. So I'm just going to start with one circle. And I'm going to place that just kind of over here so it's away from the rest of this stuff. I'm going to make that visible and keep the uh, rocket kind of fuselage and stuff. Uh, templated so I can still see kind of in relationship to that rocket how large this circle is. All right, so with this circle, uh, I'm going to change that to polygon. I'm also going to link the radius here. I'm going to link them both together. So I'm going to copy parameter on this first one, and then the second one I'm going to paste relative references. That makes it so I can just change one. I don't need to change both. I'm going to set this radius to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And that yeah, looks about good. I'm going to go ahead and increase the divisions here. Let's get that to like 24. And we should be good to go. So there's the circle. And the, the nice thing about Houdini is that we can actually use this one circle to drive uh, a couple of different objects that we're going to create. So one is going to be the rim that kind of goes around the window, like the windowsill. And then the other is going to be the window itself. So I'm going to output this to a couple of different things. So let's go ahead and start with the rim. The first thing with the rim is I'm going to sweep uh, around this. I want to create kind of this window is, is going to be like negative space and I'm going to have some positive space around it. So I'm going to create a sweep and I'm going to create a line as well. Feed the line into the first input on the sweep and feed the circle into the second input. And you can see kind of what it's doing here. So it's going to be helpful to see our normal. So I'm going to turn normals on with this little display normals for the points button and see what's going on with our normals for our circle here. So by default, the normals kind of stick out, uh, at least for the points, the normals kind of stick out, follow along with the normal for our primitive. You can see the normal for the primitive here as well if I turn that on. Uh, what we want to do though is we want the, the normals to kind of like stick into this because that's going to be how the line is is oriented. So the line is going to be oriented uh, along these normals. So to do that, I'm going to add polyframe and with the polyframe, good old polyframe here. I'm just going to turn off normal name and set the tangent to capital N, just like that. And things have gone crazy, but that's okay. Normally what it's going to do is it's going to try to align the z-axis along the normal and our line is just going in positive y right now. So we're going to change that to go in positive z instead of positive y. So now it's going the right direction. It's kind of flipped though. A couple of different ways to do this. We can make this a negative length or if we want to do it more appropriately, I'm going to add an expression. So this little attribute expression we can quickly add something to this. I want this to affect the normal. And we're going to do at n, so attribute n, and just multiply it by negative 1. So there we go. We've got our normals facing the exact opposite direction. So now they're kind of facing out like that. I can use the length of my line to drive the size of this thing. So we can make the line a little shorter if we want. And then on our sweep, I haven't done this yet, but on the sweep, we're going to go ahead and we're going to skin with auto closures. So we've got our skin with auto closure. Our normals are a little bit weird, so I'm just going to add a normal to this. So it's kind of facing out. So now all of our points and all of that stuff are all kind of lined up more appropriately. So there's our rim. That's the, the basis of our rim anyway, and we can kind of control how wide that is with our length of our line here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is create the window itself. So I'm going to shift this circle over so we can 
and this output to uh, something else. Ultimately, this is just going to get extruded, uh, but we need to do that after we've, we've placed it. If we do the extrusion now, it's going to when we do the ray uh, to place it along the side of this, it's gonna kind of squish everything together. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and start placing this. Now, like I said, we're just gonna use the same setup that we had over here. So I'm actually just gonna do Control C and come over here to Control V and then I'm gonna hold the Y key on the keyboard and drag through to cut those out. So ultimately we're gonna be doing this uh, similar process with two of these things. Uh, I'm going to be using for the the ray to kind of place this, uh, I'm going to be using this rocket, but I'm going to be doing it a couple of times, and I don't want to create a big network mess with lines running all over the place. So I'm going to, instead of having it output from here, I'm just going to do an object merge, and I'm going to link that object to this rocket uh, null that we set up before. You don't see it, you can just type it in here. I've already typed this in before. So now we've got the rocket. And basically we're just bringing that, that fuselage back in so we can use that as our placement. I'm gonna wire that in to the ray. So now ray two, let's have a look what's getting uh, positioned. Uh, that's our little points that we had from before. And I'm gonna take this circle and wire it into that copy to points. So now we've got three circles all getting uh, copied to those points. So let's you know, clean this network up a little bit. This is going to be kind of a mess, even uh, even the way that we've set it up here. This is still going to be kind of a mess, but that's right. So this is going to be our placement circle. I'm going to go ahead and name this window placement, and we're just going to move this up here like that, so about where we want the windows to be. And on this ray here, we might need to just push this out with the lift. We're gonna be using a lift here in a second to kind of control uh, how these get placed on here. So to get this circle that's being copied to points, we want these three circles to kind of fit the side of this. We're gonna use another ray, so I'm gonna drop down another ray node, and we're gonna wire those in as the first input, and then we're going to use this object merge a second time here. And you can see it's basically just kind of stuck those points to the side. Looks good. Uh, we're going to do the same thing now uh, with these guys over here. So we're going to uh, bring, let's bring this guy down just a little bit. So we're going to do another copy to points. And this is going to get wired in there. And the points that we're copying to are the same as the points that we're using to copy this. So I'm just going to wire that out to here. It tells you it's going to get kind of messy uh, with our network. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit so we can kind of see it better. I suppose I could put this stuff kind of in the middle too. That might make it easier to see. But for now, just to save time, we'll just leave it kind of a mess here. All right, so there's our copy to points. Uh, we also need to do a ray operation on this thing, though, to make sure that it kind of fits the side. So we've got the circle, the window fitting, uh, but we don't have that with this rim. So we're going to do yet another ray. Let's drop this down here, have that one feed in, and then we've actually let's go ahead and bring this guy down a little bit. And we can have that go in there. Let's have a look at our ray and see what it's doing. It's not quite fitting the way it's supposed to. Uh, let's turn off our normals here. We don't need those. Uh, so you can see it's fitting in some spots, but not others. So that's where this ray right here, its lift is going to come into play. So uh, I'm going to just bump this up a little bit. So with the lift, you can see it's kind of moving those points inside a little bit. The problem uh, with this is that these were kind of uh, somewhere we're sticking out a little bit too far, so we just need to bring that in and make sure that they're all kind of inside. And hopefully our circle is still where it's supposed to be. Looks good. All right, so now we're going to merge this stuff together. So we're going to add a merge node. We'll wire that guy in there. We'll wire our window in there. So now we've got three windows with three separate rims. Now the rims are going to be 
pretty straightforward. We're just going to add a poly extrude to these. So for all the rims here, they're all just going to get extruded out just a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, kind of inset them slightly like that. And actually, oops. And then I'm going to accidentally drag it with the mouse, which I didn't intend to do. I'm actually going to bring this down a little bit. I don't think they need to stick out quite that far. So there's a rim. Pretty easy. Next, with the windows, uh, I guess there are a couple of different ways you could do this. You could do it with an extrude, or what I like to do is just uh, use a cap. And we're going to get this cap here. And on the first U, I'm going to set that to end cap rounded. So it's kind of sticking out like that, so we're getting this kind of like pill cap shape. I'm just going to bring this down and flatten it out slightly. We don't need it to be quite so so kind of pokey, I guess, sticking out so far. Now, this creates kind of weird geometry. You could either leave it this way, or uh, what I like to do to just kind of smooth it out, round it, make it a little bit nicer. Uh, we can, of course, come up here and increase this to like 32 to get a little bit more detail if we want. Um, but another thing that we can do, isn't, which we haven't really explored yet, uh, is use a VDB. And a VDB is a voxel uh, volume operation that you can do in Houdini. It's kind of like, kind of like Minecraft voxels, but you can kind of sculpt and smooth things out with it. So what I do is drop down a VDB from polygons. So we need to type in VDB polygons. Drop that down right there. Now you can see we're getting like really weird stuff going on. Uh, we just need to increase the resolution on this a little bit. So instead of 0.1, we'll do 0.01. Get a little bit uh, more detail. So now we can see it's it's filling up that volume more completely. And we'll convert it back to the VDB convert. And by default, this is going to be set to volume. I'm going to change that to polygons. And right now it's creating just tons of polygons. We can use the adaptivity here uh, so that it'll create polygons around the curvature where it needs more detail, but then it doesn't create quite so many around here. Now this creates some pretty funky geometry, but uh, it does give us kind of uh, nice, smooth, round edges. One thing that you'll notice, though, is it's getting a little blocky in here. We can fix that by, I'm just going to drag the VDB convert down. And we're going to add a VDB smooth. And this will let us kind of smooth this out a little bit. It's actually made it pretty smooth already. We can increase the ISO value, and that'll kind of smooth things out. We can also increase the smoothing uh, here. Uh, it will make it smaller. So it's kind of it's averaged all that stuff out, and it has made it quite a bit smaller. So to fix that, we need to go back up above the ray and above this copy to points. So before this circle gets copied to points, we need to make it just a little bit larger. So the circle and the one that's creating the frame, they're both the same size. But before we do all that other stuff to it, we're going to add a transform. So just on this one, we'll add a transform, and we'll just scale this up slightly in that transform. And if we come back down here to the merge, hit the spacebar H to jump back up here so I can see all of my stuff here. You can see how it's kind of uh, scaling that up. And then we can use this transform to just kind of increase or decrease the size until it fits the way we want it to. I think I'm going to go back into the cap as well and just bring this cap out just a bit more so it has a little bit more roundness to it. And then, just like we've done before, we need to add our colors and put some nulls on these so we can call these up individually later on. So I'm going to add a color here, and actually we'll set this to like a, I don't think we've used this pink yet, so I'll drop that down there, and I'm just going to alt click and drag and move it over here and then we'll just change this color to, I don't think we've used that blue before either, so there's our colors. I'm also going to add our null, call this the, got some creaky stuff happening in the building here, but uh, we'll call this the uh, uh, window rim, I'm just going to call it rim, so, and actually let's call
call this rim underscore high underscore out. That way we can object merge those later. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'll add our window here. And, oops, sorry, let's take window underscore high underscore out. So we have, we can call all that stuff up later. And that's our, our window network, so pretty fast to put together. And now I'm just going to merge this back in with the rest of the rocket. So I'll add a merge here, and we'll take our rocket fuselage and stuff. I need to kind of zoom in a little bit. And hopefully get my mouse to quit lagging. There we go. And I've got a merge here, and then I'm just going to add some normals the end of this. So we should hopefully get to see our colors and all that good stuff. Alright, so there's our rocket. Windows placed uh, and window rims around them and also conforming to the the sides of this rocket. That's something that's a little bit tougher to, to get done just with primitive shapes. So there it is. In the next video we'll start uh, breaking this down and making a low poly version. Uh, and also, oh, we need to still add our uh, engine down here. Uh, and then we'll uh, take it in and put some textures on. So I will see you in the next video. And also remember to save. Bye.